Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Let's go through the models tonight because um, there's, there's a lot of differences that are showing up. And usually we're at the point now where things should be coming together instead of getting further apart. But I'm going to show you the difference between the models that lead to this forecast issue that we're, we're having, if you want to believe the NAM. And this model used to be a very good short-term model. Uh, you know, a lot of people have shied away from it. I like to look at it uh, because it does oftentimes catch things that the, the global models don't in the short range. And if you look at the upper low, which is right here, uh, centered probably just uh, east of Norfolk, Virginia, uh, it moves almost straight northeast, okay? And it puts us pretty much under its influence as it moves on out. Now, that's the NAM. Now, let's look at the GFS, and you'll see why the model did what it did. When we get to it, you'll see the differences at the surface as well. The GFS is the upper low. You know, they're pretty much in line up until this point. But then after 42 hours, this is where the difference comes. The upper low on the GFS, instead of moving northeastward, actually moves almost straight east. And you can see it there. It just moves east or slightly east-northeast. So instead of pushing precip up further north, it actually does the, the opposite on this run, where it to show, it <clears throat> starts to push it out further south. It only can get so far north before the upper low moves out, and then the precip has to start sinking southeastward. Now, if we jump to the Canadian model, and we'll take it right there, and you'll see that the Canadian model is probably closer. It somewhere kind of splits the difference, whereas the GFS takes it out this way, and the NAM takes it out this way. The Canadian kind of goes a little bit in between them, perhaps a little closer to the NAM than the GFS. But in terms of the practical nature on the surface, uh, we're going to we'll switch off to that, and you'll see how what it does. This is we're still on the Canadian now, and you see the low reforms off south along South Carolina, and then has some other center. You know, there's probably one center up here, and shows a second center there. In, in the thunderstorms, and it takes it out. Um, first, it takes it out, then it kind of puts it back closer to the upper low. But you can see where all the isobars are kind of pushed out this way, so there's probably another low center here. So by Saturday afternoon, the snow is moved up um, toward Poughkeepsie and in just almost to the corner of northwest New Jersey, and you see the darker blues represent heavy snow, and then the low just kind of uh, combines over here uh, east of the Delmarva Peninsula, south of Nantucket, and rotates and then out almost straight east from there. The NAM, well, let's, uh, the GFS, let's do that first. And you can see the GFS's difference because it moves straight east. So the lows right there on North Carolina. So here we are at 36 hours and they're kind of even. Snow at the doorstep in New York City Saturday morning. And then the low just kind of sits there and begins to stretch. And, and what happens is the main low just kind of occludes out and then reforms fairly rapidly in the heavy thunderstorms that it produces out here. So if you have, have an occluded front, and then here's your cold front and your warm front at the point where all three meet, the point of occlusion, that's where another new low forms. And that basically takes over and moves out straight east so that the snow on this is actually just about done by 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning and over with. Now, the NAM is different from this respect, and I suppose the European is probably going to come in. I'm going to guess it's probably going to come in not like the NAM, but, you know, you never know these days. But um, here's the main difference because of what the NAM does and that the NAM has the surface low. And you see the, how it's, it's, it's down in the mouth of Chesapeake Bay, so it's already further west-northwest than what the other models have. And it doesn't really form another center yet. It, it still has that primary low southeast of Atlantic City. Now, if this were to work out, notice the snow shield goes north of Boston to southern New Hampshire and Vermont, almost to Albany, and then um, back out into uh, central New York State and down into northwest Pennsylvania. Now, if you want to say, okay, that probably might not be snow that's actually reaching the ground. All right, I'll give you that. But the darker blues probably was where the snow is reaching the ground and that is up 
um, almost past Kingston and north of Scranton. And then you have the dark blue over Long Island and New Jersey with the heavier precip. And now here we are Saturday afternoon when we actually have some heavy snow basis on the NAM coming right over Long Island and New Jersey, extending all the way up to Boston, almost but not quite to Albany. And then that low is still there at 45 hours. It still hasn't even reformed at the point of occlusion. And then by um, Saturday evening, it's right there, still in some uh, – Wrap around precip that comes back or that's that's back over down through New Jersey, even generates a little heavy precip here over eastern Long Island at, as we go into Saturday night, and it's not really that low is still rotating around. So you know, is that a realistic solution? I'm gonna probably not, but it's five runs in a row that this model has done this, and 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 it, it just doesn't seem to want to back away. Uh, the other models are doing their own thing. And you can see the total difference in what it makes for snowfall. I'll show you all three snowfall maps. And there's the, um, this is the final snows. So we'll take it all the way out to the end here. And you can see it's got the one foot plus snows almost, you know, to Boston, um, well up into the Hudson Valley, all of southeastern New York, all of Long Island, New Jersey, uh, generating, you know, one one foot plus amounts into Connecticut and and actually has, uh, a pretty big maximum uh, in Rhode Island and, and in, um, in in that portion in southeastern Massachusetts. All right. Now we'll just show you what the GFS does. And you can see it has um, barely brings measurable uh, up into central Connecticut and maybe just uh, a little bit north of Route 84, just south of Kingston. And you have the... Um, purples which probably which represent five six inches uh along maybe route 78 or between 78 and 80 in new jersey and then covering long island and you can see the one foot amounts are further south uh, probably south of route 195 because of what the gfs does and we'll switch over to the canadian model and the canadian is you know not that much different it has the northern edge of the measurable snow a little further north and it's got five six inch amounts over long island to new york city and then back over along route 78 and the one foot amounts basically south of route 195 so um how this ultimately gets resolved i mean you know you have these models and you have the nam as the lone standout with no, with, and it does have some support from some other short range models that we look at. Uh, but um, as far as the major global models, they're not seeing what the NAM is seeing. So something uh, is amiss. Uh, I'll, I'll put the RGEM up because I like to use that. It's done very well the last two winters. Now, uh, just be cautious here because the RGEM only goes out to Saturday evening. It's only going to 48 hours. So it's a a hard match so by then you know it's it's got three and four inch snows maybe touching long island um the northern edge the the yard gem was a little further north on this run than its prior run but we still have uh, another uh, at least another six or nine hours worth of um maps to look at with this one and in terms of the surface on the R gem um it has the low you can see the low, the low center kind of not too far from where the NAM has it here and then just sort of rotates it around same idea but it doesn't seem to arc the precip as far north as the NAM did but it looks closer to the NAM model than it does the other one so we'll see in in a few hours whether it plays uh catch up so I'm just going to leave you with this as far as the NAM model is concerned um I'm, let me just get this out here I'll switch it around real quick. As far as the NAM model is concerned, the other major difference, and I, you know, you'll you'll know this, we'll know this during the day tomorrow if the runs don't change, and that is the speed at which the precip arrives. And the NAM actually has snow on the doorstep of, you know, over New York City, at least the loft, um, after uh, tomorrow evening between seven and ten o'clock, and by one o'clock in the morning. Um, it would have it snowing here, whereas the other models don't have the snow here until daybreak at the earliest. So this model seems to be six hours ahead 
You know, one of the arguments in one discussion that I was reading today uh, from uh, from the Weather Service uh, pointed out that uh, it's possible that what the NAM is reacting to is the fact that uh, it has pressures here with the high pressure much lower than the uh, other models do. Um, you can see the NAM has higher pressures over Lake Huron, lower pressures, although it's part of the high, the pressures are are uh, lower across New England because the high is further west, whereas when we jump to the GFS, um, you know, it has that higher pressure here, um, but it, it, it kind of has it a little more weighed uh, further south. So I'm not sure, you know, if, if you know, the, let's look, I'll just look quick, real quick at the Canadian, you know, they're, they're, I'm not so sure if that's really where the answer to this, the, the answer to this puzzle lies, but um, I'm, I'm going to just wait for the European. I'm not really going to change anything just based on um, the GFS yet um, or the Canadian. Uh, we'll see what the European will be out shortly. If the European trends further south, it's going to be hard to fight, um, not at least adjusting numbers lower, especially on the northern edge um, of the precip and of, of this storm. If the, if the European comes and surprises me and does something different where it starts shifting uh, precip pr pretty uh, further north, then, uh, you know, that might lead to a different conclusion. Always a surprise in this game, so we'll see shortly.